Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time it's a bit of an experiment in which we're going to try to run the ARM version of Windows 11 on an RK3588 based single board computer. To give you a bit of context, just under a year ago on the channel I ran the ARM version of Windows 11 on a Raspberry Pi 4. And it did work, it was a bit sluggish but it did work. And I achieved that using resources from the Windows on Raspberry The War project. A fantastic project which has now got resources available for running the ARM version of Windows 11 on an RK3588 based board like this Orange Pi 5. And before someone says so in the comments, this is actually an RK3588S based single board computer, but that's pretty similar. And we're going to start with this board, and if this doesn't work, we'll move on to a ROC 5B, which is a full RK3588. And I do want to stress before we start that the War Project resources for doing this are very much a work in progress. This is not finished stuff yet, this really is an experimental video. But I'm just very interested to see how well ARM Windows will run on a board like this, an octa-core board far more powerful than a Raspberry Pi 4. So let's go and get started. In this video we're going to be using this 4GB Orange Pi 5 and we're going to be installing some UEFI firmware on this microSD card. So the Orange Pi will boot from the card, run the firmware, this will make it appear like a regular PC and it'll then run Windows from where it's installed on this SSD. And the SSD will be connected using this USB 3 to SATA adapter. And this is going to plug into the top port here on the Orange Pi 5 because although both of these USB ports appear to be USB 3, they've both got blue plastic, only the top one actually is USB 3, the bottom is USB 2. And in the configuration we're going to be testing here, we don't have driver support for USB 2. So I'm also going to be connecting in this thing. This is a USB 3 hub. You can see lots of ports on the sides like that. And this is going to connect to the Orange Pi using a USB-C connector to this port here, which is also USB 3. So with the hub connected in, we'll be able to plug in keyboard, mouse, things like that into the hub. And I'm also going to be connecting into the hub this thing. This is a USB 3 to Ethernet adapter. And the reason we're going to be using this is because we also, in the configuration we're testing, don't have driver support for the Ethernet port on this board, so we won't have a network connection. And I'm therefore hoping, and I could be wrong, that by using a Ethernet to USB adapter, we're going to get a network connection. Anyway, this is the hardware we're going to be using, so let's now go in search of our software. Greetings! Here we are on the computer we're going to use to set everything up, where I've created a folder to work in, and I've also plugged in our SSD and a microSD card. So let's go to the WOR website. Here we are, and go to their guides, and there's a guide down here for installing on rock chip devices, and it does make it very clear that this is preliminary at the moment, but I'm just fascinated to try this out as soon as I can. So if we scroll on down and keep going down, we eventually get to a bit about the firmware, and here's a link to download the firmware for our board. So let's just uh, right click and uh, open that in another tab. There it is. And somewhere here, I think we will find, there we are, there are the images. There's the one for the Orange Pi 5. Let's download that like uh, that. Won't take a second, nice small image. And let's just get rid of that. Let's be tidy as we go. And let's write that to our micro SD card straight away. Let's be exciting. Let's run up Bologna Etcher like that, select the file, there we are. We're going to send it to the microSD card, which is the Lexar reader there, and uh, select that. And uh, there we are, look, it's all, all finished. So we can close that down and go back to the web. Next, we need to think about setting up the SSD, which will hold Windows 11. And if we go down a bit further past all this stuff around firmware, that's all there if you want to change the firmware on the board rather than writing to a micro SD card, so I'm not going to be doing that. And now we need to think about Windows itself. And I'm going to use the Windows on Raspberry Imager, so I'm going to go to the downloads page for that there, open that up as well like that, download the version 
there we are and just save the file like that again nice and quick if things work with this quick when we get around to the windows iso but at the moment this is nice and fast there we are let's just extract all of that lot like that that is cool do we have a setup file here looks like we don't need it can we just simply run that there we can windows doesn't like it though but never mind can we get into this anyway we're going to run anyway look i've got a large scale factor set here so we can see things easier and hopefully yes we've run up our piece of software that's that's very cool let's therefore the, at the moment just minimize that and get rid of that and uh, go back to the web where we now need to get hold of a windows iso and this is slightly more complicated than you may imagine and again well documented by the war project they provide lots of fantastic documentation and there's various ways to do this but to work with the windows on raspberry flasher we need to download and generate our windows 11 arm image using a uup converter script and to do that, we'll go down here to this link and open uh, this one up. This is an exciting video, isn't it? We're stepping into the unknown. And uh, here we are. Let's just look at what we've got here. Here is uh, Windows 11. And we're going to go for a relatively old edition because the newer editions apparently don't work at the moment. So we'll use an older edition. And in fact, I think the image I'm going to use is going to be this one down here. 22H ARM 64. And it's telling us this is an ARM build, which for us, of course, is good. Many people wouldn't want that. But if you've got an ARM computer, you want an ARM image. So that's obviously what we've got. And I'll change my language here, I think, to English. Have we got English United Kingdom? They have. Isn't that exciting? And uh, next, we can presumably move on. Oh, it's up here, Chris. I'd missed the next button sitting there rather obviously on the screen. And I only want Windows 10 Pro, so we'll just get rid of that to keep things a bit faster, like that. And we'll continue on down here. And uh, I think I'm going to take out the updates as well. And there was a warning here about the script being created not working if we're not running on Windows, but we are running on Windows, so everything should be OK. So let's click to a Create Download Package. And uh, there we are. It'll save it like that. And it's done it. And if we now come out of that, go back to our downloads directory, there we are, we can see that. Let's uh, extract all that as well. And uh, it'll do its thing. And to run this script, which will generate our Windows ISO image, we can just now click on UUP download Windows. What's the guessing Windows will object to this as well? It has done. Never mind. We will, uh, uh, more info, that's the way we do it, isn't it? More info and... Uh, run anyway windows we know it's okay yes we want to do it and this will start no no it's given us another warning let's press the r to run once like that and uh, yes it's starting to do things what it's doing is downloading the windows files the windows component putting it all together and creating our windows 11 arm iso which we're going to install on the ssd using uh, the windows on raspberry flasher and this is now going to take a very long time. So I'm going to go and talk to some ducks and I'll come back to you after that. And here I am back again. The script is still doing its stuff, creating our Windows ISO. Isn't Windows itself far more exciting when it's doing things in the command line? Maybe that's just me. Anyway, returning to real time on our screen, about half an hour has now passed and it seems we can press zero to exit. There we are, that has worked. It looks like we've now got our ISO file, says he, moving things around all over the place. I presume it's there, is it that one? Is that the ISO? Um, that looks like it's our ISO file, isn't it? Yes, it seems to be. For some reason, I'm not showing file extensions here. I always show file extensions, but obviously not at the moment. Anyway, this means we can now go to our imager program and work through this. Clearly, we're going to go to next and select our storage device, which is going to be our SSD. I must get this right. It is going to be that. That's correct. And the device type we're going to set to Raspberry Pi 3, apparently, for doing an RK3588 board. Next, we'll go to next. If you see what I mean, we need to pick our image file, which is going to be sitting in uh, downloads and RK3588, and it's going to be in uh, here, I think, isn't it? There we are. That was our file. It seems to be OK with that. It's mounting the ISO image. And yes, it's picked up. We've got what we thought we had, so that must be good news. Let's do next again. This is a thing about drivers and stuff like that. We'll just accept that and accept again. We're just going to keep accepting here, 
And uh, now I think we can just press on a nice red install button. And this should now be installing Windows to the SSD. And when this is completed, we can plug it into the Orange Pi 5 and finish off the Windows installation. Right, here I am back again with everything connected up. So we'll turn on the power. And uh, there we are. We seem to have a bit of life in the equipment. So let's go across to the HDMI output where things are clearly happening. Although I'm sure it'll take a bit of time. So we'll speed on through. And here we are. This is amazing. Should we answer a yes to that? We will. Clearly our mouse is working. That has to be good news. And the keyboard's OK as well. Do we want a second keyboard? No, thank you. Although it doesn't seem to have picked up a network connection. My attempt to get around this by using the USB Ethernet adapter obviously hasn't worked. So we need to break into this with Shift F10. And we want to type an OOBE and a bypass NRO like that. And uh, this hopefully will get the thing to reboot and not require a network connection next time. And uh, yes, we're back again. So I'll just uh, click on through. And there we are. I can now go, I don't have internet. And we can continue with limited setup. I'll accept the uh, license agreement, of course. Who is going to use this device? It's going to be EC. That's going to be me. There we are. I gave it all the correct answers. And oh, look, it's saying hi. Greetings, Windows 11. Are you enjoying running on the Orange Pi 5? And with a bit of messing about, I didn't think that was going to work, but it has. We're running Windows 11. We've got the desktop here on the Orange Pi 5. And so I think, as usual, I'm now going to optimize things for video recording, and I'll come back to you after that. Right, I thought we'd now take a look at a normal boot in real time because performance here is pretty impressive. So we'll turn on the power. And here we go. And pretty quickly, we should see the UEFI firmware coming up from the micro SD card. There it is across the bottom of the screen. It gives us time to press escape to select other boot options. We don't have any other boot options other than our SSD, so we won't press escape. And fairly soon, Windows should now start to boot up. Is it going to do it? Yes, we can see a familiar Windows thing. And personally, I'm very interested in the way that Microsoft seems to be investing more and more in ARM Windows. For a start, it sells a version of its Surface Pro 9 tablet with an ARM processor. And last November, it launched its own ARM development desktop hardware. And uh, as you can see, we've now arrived here on the desktop in ARM Windows on the RK3588 based board on the Orange Pi 5. That was a pretty impressive boot, I think. And of course, these days we've got Apple having transitioned to ARM. We've got an ARM version of Photoshop from Adobe. And we've even got rumors around that Windows 12 is going to be optimized for ARM and that Microsoft may even be developing its own new ARM processor to try and take on Apple. Anyway, with all that noted, let's see how performance is here. Obviously, we're constrained by having no internet connection. So there's lots of things missing, but things do work. Let's click on the Edge browser. It comes up pretty quickly. This is a, a nice responsive system. And uh, what else can we run up? Let's run up the uh, file manager to do some uh, management of files. It works, doesn't it? And uh, let's go, for example, to settings over there. And if we go to system, we scroll down. This really is, I think, impressive. This is this is working very nicely. And yes, here we are. We've got our uh, Rockchip RK3588S processor, 1.45 gigahertz, eight cores, running Windows 11 ARM. I am impressed with this, as you can probably tell. And yes, we don't currently have all the driver support we need for things like a network connection, but it'll arrive. What the War Project has done so far to get this working at all, I think, is very impressive. It points towards a very interesting future. And so what I'm now going to do is to go in search of some software that I can install in the old fashioned way. So 
I've made use of SneakerNet and I've installed a number of applications. And the great thing about Windows 11 ARM is that you can install native ARM applications and you can also install 32-bit x86 applications and you can install 64-bit x86 applications. And admittedly, the x86 applications have to run via emulation, but they do work. It's all seamless for the user. And indeed, if we look in the file manager and we go to this PC and the C drive, we can see we've now got three program files folders here in Windows. The standard ones and an ARM program files folder. I'm very interested to see that. So let's show you how some of these programs actually work. And I could only find two native ARM applications I could install offline. The first of these was 7-zip, the file manager. Here it is. If we go to help and about 7-zip, we can see it's the ARM64 version. I find that very exciting. And the other native ARM application I managed to install was VLC Media Player, which is there. And unfortunately, this doesn't work. And I imagine this is because when you first run it, it tries to go online and can't. But do not fear, we can play a video anyway. We can go to a videos here where I've copied across an explaining computers video. It'll play with a native Windows player. Here we are. And it works reasonably well. Let's bring it full screen. This is not too bad. We don't have any sound on this system yet. We haven't got an audio driver yet, but this is playing 1080p video pretty well. We've seen much worse performance on many ARM SBCs running a various Linux distros. So I'm quite impressed with that. Anyway, let's look at a few more applications. I've installed Office XP. These are 32-bit applications. I think I launched that twice. I did. I keep doing that in a Windows 11, but never mind. It works perfectly well. Very fluid. Let's run up Excel as well. Comes up no problems at all. This is a very usable system. And it's very obvious that Windows 11 ARM is far more usable on an RK3588 board than it is on, for example, a Raspberry Pi 4. And finally, I've installed GIMP. I always like to install GIMP to test it out on any system I can test it out on, to be honest. I just like seeing the Toad stores coming up as it launches. It's a nice piece of software, is GIMP, and it's just about launched here. Go on, GIMP, you can do it. There it is. And if we now just do a new document like that, and uh, OK, this means that we can now do some painting here in GIMP. So there we are. Even though the resources we've been working from are a work in progress, we've managed to run pretty successfully Windows 11 ARM on an RK3588 based single board computer. And this demonstration of Windows running on ARM hardware, to me at least, suggests that the dominance of x86 in desktop computing is going to continue to diminish. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.